gonna take Cracker Jack timing, Wang. Total concentration. You ready, Jack? I was born ready. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. Back here on the channel, we've got Jesse Blaze Snyder, comic book writer, musician, voice actor, host. You, you are a man of many different talents. And you also have a lot of wonderful opinions, not only on comic books, but pop culture. How are you doing, Jesse? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me on again. I, I, I love talking about these things. Uh, you know, comic books were always uh, my go-to because unlike TV and movies and stuff, there's no actors. There's no physical person. You know, it was just sort of a drawing of some sort of marquee of a person. And I love the purity of that. You know, when it comes to television and film and whatnot, the ego about like what people look like and who they are and like prejudgments. It's like, you can't prejudge a drawing of a person like other than like what it was intended to be. Oh, he's happy. You know, he's sad. You know, people look at people and they have so many just, you know, Russell Crowe, I don't know. I, I don't like Russell Crowe. There's something about his face pisses me off. You know, it's like, it's so easy for people to be really like, just superficial and in comics a part of that is erased and it just is always for me it's made for a much more enjoyable artistic experience as a creative person and just as a reader because you know it's, it's not about superficial things it's about what it's about you know what's interesting about comic books is um as someone that's that knows a little bit about the history of, of comic books in the industry when you go look back the comic book industry itself has been far more progressive than other entertainment industries, certainly other uh, industries, you know, within, you know, uh, out, out there within, within America. There have been glass ceilings shattered 40 years ago that have just recently been shattered in, in other industries and whatnot. And one of the things that, that kind of, I would have, a little salty language that chaps my ass here, Jesse, is that we have a lot of people that kind of come into the industry or come into the hobby and they decide that they're going to, they're here to make a change without any understanding about the history of comic books and decide that history begins today and no no progress has ever happened within comic books. And we have finally have a trans character. This has never happened before. And you're like, well, actually, if you go back to the 70s or if you go back to Doom Patrol, there, there, there were actually trans writers, let alone characters, on a book like that. Or we finally have a gay superhero. And you're like, well, that's actually been in, in the comic books for, for quite some time. And they act like there's never been any progress made, you know, not only within, you know, kind of society, but within comic books in the industry, whether it be the characters or the creators. Yeah, you know, well, we talked about this um, before uh, on another show about how one idea begets the other one. You know, like to a certain degree, you know, Batman is an answer to Superman, um, you know, and, and and that there, you know, something, somebody like the Red Guardian is an answer to Captain America. You know, all of these characters, and, and even, what's his name, the bad guy in The Boys, who's like the evil Superman, he's an answer to Superman as well. You know, it's like, okay, well, here's Superman, well, what if that guy didn't have the moral fortitude? Um, mm -hmm. All of these things are are this great pendulum, and, and again, like, like, removing that little superficial bit that, like, sort of adds all of this crazy nuance of people being confused, like, there's no confusing, here's Superman, here's Batman, he's the light, he's the dark, you know, here's Joker, and here's the Batman, like, you know, there, there are all these pendulum swings, you know, switches, is wow, all the way over here, wow, all the way over there, and I think from that, you know, the nature of comics, and it's like real sort of extremeness in how it goes, and it's like, well, let's try that, if it was like this, you know, we make these really big decisions and it does progress the ideas forward. You know, we really are able to sort of move that ball forward and try things, try a lot of different things. You know, it's like when people go like, oh, we need a gay Superman. Well, we got a gay Superman. We've got Apollo, you know, that like, like that did eventually happen. The idea that people are viewing a world where Superman is always a straight white guy like, I kind of get you, but you're really missing a lot of nuance here. That just happens to be one archetype, and we create... You can go to Miles, Milestone Comics. You have a, a Superman archetype right there exactly. waiting for you. Exactly. They happens to have a very interesting backstory and a really interesting point of view that can tell a story that Clark Kent could never tell. Well, and that's exactly what I'm saying. Like, I don't want Black Superman. I want Icon, you know, like, and I want him to have more uh, more screen time, and I want him to be given the opportunity to shine. Like, we do get those places. We do get those pieces. And, like, a lot of it seems to be sort of, like, fighting fighting over the, the, 
the screen. You know, it's like, it's like, yeah, but more focus is on this thing. I'm like, okay, uh, I get that. But it's sort of arbitrary. It's like an arbitrary change that doesn't really mean anything. And it's not really progressing anything. In reality, comic books are progressing all the time because it's really fundamentally giving a chance to all these different characters. You know, the Punisher is is a an answer to so many of these other moralistic heroes. And when he shows up and you go, well, what if this guy just really didn't like care about so many of these moral Why things? can't Batman kill Joker? Well, we got the Punisher. Yes, he can. Yeah, he can. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't have, and it doesn't have to be the Joker that we kill. You know, like these are all metaphors to begin with. So, like, people are just trying to like steal the marquee. Like, I want to steal that name. I want that name so that everybody's looking at the. But like, people are interested in that name because of what it represents. You know, the idea that it represents. There are other. You have a new idea. Cool. Let's create that new idea and let's really bring it to its conclusion. Let's really open it up. You know. It, you know. Some of this came from um, a, a comment. Uh, you know. I, I was going back and forth with some people in the comments, and a lot of them were really positive. And this was like a positive one. Um, and I said something to the effect of that the world is always getting better, and that things are always getting better. And um, you know. And that I you know, I know tomorrow is going to be better than it was yesterday. And somebody asked me like, well, how do you know that? And it's kind of sad. It's, it's sad that like people have to ask that. Like, like, how do you know? Like, how do you know that it's going to get better? Because I think, you know, as a child, like you kind of come up and there's like an assumption that responsible people are doing responsible things and the world is getting progressively better. And then you start to see how things have been being done and you get really disillusioned. And then you go, oh, well, like, what, what's going on here? But if you look at it, um, I, my, my, uh, my ex-brother-in-law got me, a, got me a book because he knew he had heard me say similar things to this. But it was all about the progress that we had made in the current century and how much better things were getting. And somebody went out of their way to collect all the information and to demonstrate that there is less violence in the country. There's less gun violence in the country now than there was. Than ever before, it's yes. the amount of that it is being covered on the news that has increased. The change is how we talk about these things, is how they are uh, presented to us. But in reality, we are progressing. Things are getting better. And, you know, if you if you don't notice it, well, well, there's no slaves on chain gangs outside, you know, the, the car when you drive through, uh, you know, through the country. And there are slaves in other countries. You know, there are places where these things are still going on. We're making progress. You know, we are not the terrible place that we were yesterday on many different levels. It may be that those things are broadcast to us. If it bleeds, it leads. You know, it may be that things like that are happening where it's being shoved in our face and it's seemingly things are getting worse. And the worst person on Twitter is being brought to the forefront and being shown to the world as being representative of the, the, the whole you know, of the conversation that's going on. That's not the conversation, man. You know, I, I guarantee you, I'm having more conversations in my life than most people are. And I'm telling you, I, I talk to all walks of life and this isn't what's happening. You know, this, it's not, and, and, you know, maybe there's some passive sexism and some passive racism, but nobody's really like, man, what I need to live in is a world that's more white and more male. And like, that's not what's happening. You know, at all. The fact that the conversations about the wouldn't it be nice if there was more women in politics and more women controlling the, and that there was more of a, a, a maternal energy. Go, like, that's great. We weren't having those conversations yesterday because there were walls to religion that were holding back women from, you know, these positions and from speaking up. And like and those things, as they started to fall away, these conversations were allowed to come up. Things are continuing to progress. You know, now we're daily having conversations about the nuance of our language, about what we're calling people and that it would be nice if we could call people other things. That's great. That's great. We're not having ugly conversations about freaking war and the price of oil and all this shit. We're talking about progressive things. Granted, at the same time, all these same people are allowing a lot of similar things to be, you know, to, to happen under the surface, but we're in war less. Less people are dying. You know, if we look at over the years of how many people have died fighting wars, it's 
it's going down. It's going down. You know, like, and, and I, please don't take my words and find an excuse to try and pump up that, oh, things are so bad and Jesse's not looking at this. Just please find an excuse to see all of the ways in which it is improving. It's as we continue to notice and see that it's improving, that we can keep amplifying the improvement. Things are getting better. Things do progress. And yes, comic books are one of the most progressive places to be. And honestly, if not for people like, say, Ike Perlmutter or whatever, um, you know, the producers high up in the system who are business minded, who have been going, oh, women can't sell comics and women, you can't make a women toy because the boys aren't interested in that. It's bullshit. It's always been bullshit. You know, it's about what we're interested in and you know in the moment like black widow is cool and she's being presented in a cool way like yeah we do want those toys and we're annoyed that we can't get our hands on a black widow figure because we want the whole avengers you know like we that's the team and, and one of the team members is a woman and like of course we want the person who's on the team you know whether it's a woman or they're black it doesn't matter what they are we're interested in the things that we're interested in and the superficial ideas that kind of hold us back they're they're not they're not stopping us from progress and we will win out and we will continue to get better. Things will get better and better and better. And how fast we go is really kind of up to everybody's opinion. You know, it's like, like the more we think that it's like so terrible, the more the conversation stays really terrible and really ugly. But the moment we start to go, you know what, things are getting better. And maybe I'm going to assume the best about people. And maybe those conversations get a little bit faster. And we, we end up putting like oil on all these squeaky wheels and we start to, progress much faster it would definitely um i could just think about like when i was a kid my my town essentially like in my where i grew up in missouri it was kind of like the the county was segregated all most every town was was essentially would only have mostly white residents you would have some latino residents but no black residents but only one town in the county that's where you know the uh, the black black folks in that county would live Nowadays, if you go to my hometown, there's plenty of black people here and there. My my nieces and nephews are all uh, half white, half black. Plenty of my my uh, classmates in high school are in the same situation. And you just you see like the progress, and it is actually quite rapid when you see the like the culture change that's happening. You know, not only um, within pop culture, or whatever, but you, you just see it happening in the Midwest and these smaller towns and everything. And things are, are definitely like night and day, you, you wouldn't hear the same jokes like as a, as a kid growing up where I grew up that I heard. You wouldn't hear those today because they wouldn't be allowed because they're not they're not a, they're not OK. Well, and it's not even like a matter of like they wouldn't be allowed. Like it's just there's really no room for them anymore. That's what I'm it, saying. If you said it, there would be repercussions. People wouldn't allow it. anymore. Well, well, I, what the I, perceptions and the understanding of what's right and wrong have changed. Well, that, well, that, well, that's more like sort of like you know where where I'm at with it of like, you know, there, there, the, there's a temperature to a room. I mean, like you know, like like we progressed over time. Like you know, you just look at like just you know, people are very focused on on blacks, like Irish slaves. You know, like, like the, the Irish were, were enslaved and they were being being treated like shit forever. You know, I'm Irish. You know, like I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm a mutt. You know, like but but I mean like. The history of the Irish people, like that, like slowly these walls got broken down. Hey, maybe we shouldn't, you know, enslave these other white guys. You know, eventually turn to maybe we shouldn't enslave anybody. Like progress, it continues to happen, and you know, and and right now we're having all these conversations about, um, you know, sort of uh, you know people's sexuality and and ways that people want to be uh, taken or treated in society, and it's great, you know, as these things continue to progress and these conversations evolve, I think the next conversation is how to be more polite in our discourse and, you know, how to get along and make more progress. How to disagree without trying to ruin someone's life. Yeah, but you don't learn that and you don't get to that point until you it comes to a head in some fashion and it becomes the new bubble that's rising to the top of the boiling water well what's the biggest bubble right now it's that the right and the left just can't get along and that we're really like overdoing it and i i know as somebody who's a centrist you know that like everybody's really generally pretty good on, on both sides and they're just sort of wrapped up in 
in, in the, their priorities are different. My priority is this conversation. Your priority is this conversation. And like you're talking about this and you're talking about this and you're screaming that way and I'm screaming this way. And, and we're not seeing that so much of our, uh, you know, we all need to breathe and, you know, we all need the planet to be, you know, have, have uh, you know, trees on it and water that we can drink. And there are very uh, important things that we can all agree on. And, and as we learn to get on the same page and to conversate from the same place, you know, like we were talking about um, in one of our last videos, I was going back and forth in some comments and I was feeling very like kind of hurt and like insulted and I resisted going at the person in like an angry way. And by the end of our discourse, they apologized to me literally for the thing that was bothering me and, um, you know, and, and kind of showed themselves to be generally really on my side, even though they weren't seeming like that from their comments at all. They were seeming like they were very against me and, and were misunderstanding me and not really getting where I was coming from. And it, it hurt my feelings. And, but by the end of it, I was like, wow, I was, I was really wrong. I was misreading their comments. And I think we're just, you know, we're misreading everybody's position. You know, my, my girlfriend loves to say that she really thinks that everybody agrees a lot more than, um, than they realize. And that, you know, we're just kind of the way we talk about things, you know, really the, the language that we use is getting in the way. And, and, and we're seemingly, you know, it's like if you, <laughs> it, if you, I, I'm trying to think of a good example, but let's say 10 years ago, if your biggest gripe was that people weren't um, acknowledging, you know, the gay community and the, and the different types of sexualities that there could be, you know, yeah, the world was really dark for you. You know, if your biggest gripe was that, um, you know, that it had been slavery just a little while ago and now it wasn't. And you were like, yeah, we've made so much progress. You're like, it depends where you're focused. Wherever your focus is, if you're focused on the problem of the day, it doesn't mean that it's not a problem. It doesn't mean that it doesn't need to be fixed. But your perspective may be a little bit balanced towards the problem or balanced away from the problem because that's what you're looking at. But that does not mean that things are not always getting progressively better. Yeah, but Jesse, we're incentivizing people through language in the way that people are treated nowadays, to be marginalized. You have to find why you're more marginalized than the person next to you, and you have to shout it from the rooftops because you get social credit, you get clapbacks, you get uh, special uh, you know, considerations in society and whatnot. So I think everybody, like, there's a whole generation, well, not all, the whole generation, but there are a large amount of people that are every day trying to see what's different between uh, you or I so that, that they can find, figure out which one of us is more aggrieved and let us know why we should be upset about it. the hardest journey on this planet. And, you know, if you think spiritually, as I, I do, you know, is to take a measure of responsibility for your suffering. It's really, really hard. You know, but they say it takes two to two tango. And at the end of the day, you don't have to be upset. You don't have to allow people or situations that you can't control to upset you. Um, a war is an obvious thing of like there's, there's physical pressure being put on people. But there are ideological wars that go on and they are just the same. They are less bloody and people don't die. But the same things are happening. One person is attempting to take their free will and supplant somebody else. But so much of the thing that drives everybody in our battles are being compromised by the fact that an idea exists outside of you and you feeling the need to go and force your free will on the other thing. Invariably, there's this terrible wheel, this hero, villain, victim wheel. And, you know, in spiritual thought, you would, you would basically say, I need to get off of this wheel. I, the wheel eventually crushes everybody and, and you live long enough to become the bad guy. I don't want to become the oppressor so that I can oppress those people who I feel originally oppressed me. And, you know, and it's, it's happening right now with so much of like the, 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 the more liberal leaning people. You know, I, I have a good friend of mine 
I remember he and I were talking about race swapping in films and we were talking about all these different anime movies and, and different, different books that had been made where they kept changing the race and we were so aggravated about it. And then finally we got to Wally West and I was like, ah, oh, and that made me so upset. You know, like I, like he was like one of my favorite characters and it was a, a sort of a vessel for me. I identified so strongly with him and he goes, no, I don't care about that. And he didn't care about it because he was black and he decided that, it was okay that this same thing that was being done to the minorities in America be done to the whites. That's not progress. That's when you become the villain. That's when you become the oppressor. You know, I was on a football team, and every year the, the seniors would haze the underclassmen by making them carry in all of the, the sports equipment. And when I became a senior, I stopped it. Day one, I went, no. Like, don't you remember how we hated that? Why would we do that to them? Do we want a better world or do we want to keep this wheel going? So to take your power, to take whatever responsibility that you can for why you were in the situation that led to whatever happened to you, whatever hurt you, how you were hurt, and to try and get at it from a place of power. Of, I know what the right answer is. I'm going to be the change that I want to see. And I know that if I go and try to force my free will on somebody else who's weirdly is a racist or strangely is a sexist, that they're just going to come up against me trying to force them and they're going to fight back for no good reason. That the best thing that I can do is to be like that guy who goes, uh, you know, to the Ku Klux Klan members' houses. You know, the black guy, I always forget his name, but I, oh, I have nothing but respect for this man. And he has a collection of hoods because I mean to go to the bad place and do the right thing and not allow yourself to fall to despair and to have to feel like you need to fight and defend yourself to just be the, the change you want to see like that is hard that is hard to do and when that is happening when when the other thing is happening not being the change you want to see and arguments taking place it's very easy to focus on that and think that that's everything but there are people who are learning from the situations that they've been put through, are taking whatever responsibility they can, that they are the only thing that they can change is how they feel, how they react, how they show up. And showing up the right way, doing the right thing, those people are changing the world. And it, it's easy to think that the world's not being changed as we say, well, look at how many people are still fighting. Look at how many people are still squab squabbling. Well, we are just, you know, we are send selling weapons to Afghanistan. We are still doing this. We are... Yes, but look what we were doing yesterday. Look how many people aren't doing that anymore. Look at the fact that we don't have a draft anymore. You know, th there are so many things that you can point to and say, look, progress is being made. And the only thing you can do to continue to perpetuate that progress is be the change you want to see. Take whatever responsibility for yourself you can and lift yourself up and try to be more like Superman. Try to be more like these people, you know. But I know, and you should know from all of this progress that we see all around, that things are getting better and they will always be getting better. And don't get lost in the silly squabbling, you know, and, and try to keep on raising that bar because it, it's getting raised every day. I, I really believe it. And even, you know, a channel like Thinking Critical, I mean, really, I love your channel, Wes, because I love comics and I want to see comics improve and progress. I want to see our medium be, you know, I've heard you say the greatest medium there is. And I, that's what I believe, man. It's the greatest medium there is where anything in your mind can just, boom, there it is. The thing that was in your mind, it's there. And in TV and film, you got to worry about budgets and worry about all these things. But a picture's worth a thousand words and we can do anything in this medium. And to have the conversation stop and be brought to a to a, a standstill over a bunch of ideological things that that people can't exactly agree on all of these things should be allowed to be popping up you know we we, we got icon and we got apollo and we have all these different abilities to get these um these ideological points of view out there and to experiment and for people to be heard and for things to be tested that's wonderful you know we need to be critically moving forward but from a place of reason and power and understanding and not of attacking and of feeling like, oh, man, everything's falling apart. Like, that doesn't help anything. And, uh, you know, and really, if things weren't getting any better, 
it would still behoove us all to try and behave like they were and try to be the change that we want to see in the world. And I don't know about you, but I want to see things get better. Absolutely. I do want to say thank you very much to Jesse Blaze Dyer for joining me today, kind of talking about some of the progress that uh, people are missing. It's definitely out there, but it is easy to kind of get sucked up in, in all the things that are happening and you're being bar bombarded with negativity left and right. It's easy to get overwhelmed and, and not realize all the things that are happening uh, every single day that are actually improving. Good wins in the end. <laughs>